We're all communicative beings sensitive to a quality of order and logic that validates our expectations. At the same time, a little drama and intrigue can also serve to pique the interest and response of your audience. Purposeful use or disuse of these little tools and tips will have an effect on your audience, whether by accident or by design. As a presenter in English as a second language, your courage is commendable. The following additional tools and tips will help you to do an even better job. Herzlich willkommen zum English Coach Podcast, präsentiert von trainingtree.de, die personalisierte Lösung im Bereich Erwachsenenbildung. Und jetzt dein Gastgeber. Er sagt zwar immer ich und dich, ansonsten ist sein Deutsch fantastisch. Ian Antonio Patterson. Well, hello there. So good that you've made it through to episode five of season one. This is actually the second part of what we started in episode three. It is for those of us who are sometimes required to deliver a presentation in English as a second language. Business presentations, transitions for fluency, part two, where we dig a little deeper and explore a few more useful tools for you. Conjunctions are used to join ideas, together with a little intonation and pause, as well as the other tools and tips introduced in the previous episode, they can be of great help. Previously, we looked at using transitions and signaling to smoothly or more gracefully indicate to your audience that there will be movement between presentation slides, presentation points, visual aids, sections, or ideas. We started with a story where the protagonist found himself suddenly faced with the possibility of perhaps having to drive an unfamiliar car with manual transmission. He doesn't like to use the clutch. However, the clutch provides a vital function in an internal combustion automobile where it allows for smooth transition between gears and controlled transmission of power along the drivetrain to the wheels. Generally, mindful use of transitions in presentations helps in a similar way, as do the various types of conjunctions, our topic for today. Now, there are three main types of conjunctions, but altogether, four ways in which we can connect ideas and make it easier for your audience to follow your train of thought. They are coordinating conjunctions, subordinating conjunctions, correlative conjunctions, and they are also conjunctive adverbs. They function as conjunctions too. So there you have it. It makes perfect sense. Three tools and four ways. So let's have a quick look at the definition of each. Number one. Coordinating conjunctions connect two independent clauses. A clause is a group of related words containing a subject and a verb. A clause can be distinguished from a phrase, which is itself a group of related words that does not contain a subject-verb relationship. Number two. Subordinating conjunctions establish the relationship between the dependent clause and the rest of the sentence. It also turns the clause into something that depends on the rest of the sentence for its meaning. Number three. Correlative conjunctions are formed by combining with other words to form a correlation. And last, but by no means least, number four. Conjunctive adverbs are used to create complex relationships between ideas. They are also called transitional devices. So there we have it, the definitions. Let's now have a look at conjunctions in action. Coordinating conjunctions are the simplest of the lot. They include for, and, nor, but, or, yet, and so. 
We're actually doing grammar now related to English for work. So it's no surprise that we'll try to use more meaningful true-to-life examples. We could proceed like this for continuity, or we could borrow a bit of drama from the story of the protagonist. He wasn't purposely dishonest, nor did he mean to in any way give the wrong impression. He implied that he could drive, yes, but he can only drive automatic cars. His entire team presumed that he could perform in this way, simple. Yet that assumption might soon prove to have been not entirely right. The protagonist will now have to step up his game and find a way to satisfy the expectations of his team. So all in way of saying, what exactly? I'm saying that transitions, signaling, and conjunctions in presentations are also about shaping and managing the expectations of your audience. I'm also saying that I just used all of the coordinating conjunctions, for and nor, but, or, yet, and so. The fanboys for short. The protagonist thought to himself, that he actually had nothing against riding the red horse or using the manual clutch. He thought to himself that he had nothing against the clutch, but it was the clutch that had something against him. Yet now, for a smooth ride all the time, he might have to put a foot forward and get to know it. The Subordinating Conjunction Since this The English Coach podcast attempts also to impart knowledge and not just to keep you entertained, in keeping with good pedagogical methodology, I will now tell you why you're listening and what to listen for. You will now hear examples of the subordinating conjunction. Listen for since, whereas, once, although, as long as, even though, rather than, as though, and because. All of this is about developing fluency. As an English trainer of adults, I can also administer language drills, since many people are convinced, with good reason of course, that this is what they need to make progress in learning the basics. As an English coach, however, I want to help my learners to find their own way, whereas they give themselves permission to dance with the language. Once the basic drills and repetitions are done with, reflection, questioning, context, and living conversation will take them to the next level. Although we've all in some way and at some time been taught to dislike the idea of repetition, Repetition of your main point is a good way to get your message across while presenting. It's perfectly fine, as long as you don't use it too much. We've also been trained to dislike the idea of a monologue, even though many good things start with reflection. Looking inward, in a dialogue, like seeking to change your world by changing yourself, as a wise woman once said. Or rather than ask someone else for the meanings of new words all the time, simply start by asking yourself. There's nothing wrong with talking to yourself. You can ask yourself questions. You can even answer yourself as though you were talking to someone else. It's also perfectly fine to do that, as long as you never take sides, as a wise man once said. So again, all in way of saying, what exactly? I'm saying that asking yourself the question, how do I say that in English, will help you to develop your vocabulary and fluency because it keeps you actively searching for new words. Since we all have a smartphone in our pockets these days, like smart extensions of ourselves, use it. I'm also saying that the words although, as long as, even though, as though, rather than, whereas, once, since, and because were just now, all examples of the subordinating conjunction. 
They help to communicate meaning by establishing relationships between different parts of a sentence. I really hope you're getting it so far. My goal is still to add a splash of color and life to your learning experience. So feel free to head on over to trainingtree.de slash podcast for a more comprehensive list of conjunctions. Simply check out the show notes for this episode. You'll also find a link to my article, DIY English. It will also be of help to you. Our goal for today is still to explore the use of transitions and signaling while delivering a presentation in English as a second language, making it easier for your audience to follow you. English training for work is what I do. I've also had other jobs that have nothing to do with teaching, training, or coaching. In other words, I do have an idea of what actually goes on at work sometimes. So, truth be told, while presenting, it's not always about taking the flattering, ego-stroking, touchy-feely approach all the time. Sometimes your audience just has to listen. I think that an otherwise interested audience will be engaged, whether you try to make it easier for them or not. The more interesting question could be, what overall meaning would your audience derive if you were to just, for instance, simply use Google Translate, stand before them and read, giving no thought whatsoever to any kind of transitional device. The Correlative Conjunction The strictures of pedagogical methodology dictate that I now tell you what you're listening for and why you're listening. You will now hear examples of the correlative conjunction. Listen for both and, also, either or, as as, neither nor, and not but. What overall impression would they get if you just stood up and pressed play on a pre-recorded video? That works sometimes. But what impression do you want to give in addition to your core message? Also about the effort that you are willing to make. These questions are relevant regardless of who is delivering a presentation in whatever spoken language. Both Google Translate and Video Media are fantastic tools, by the way. I also use them all the time, as much as I do the act of reading from a script. I'm using my own script that I wrote right now. You have to make the decision. It's either you use the opportunity to present on a human level to establish a stronger relationship with your audience by speaking more freely and in so doing, appearing to be also more fluent with your topic. Or simply to stand before them and read, in which case an email would also do. I also use emails and written scripts and handouts all the time. It's neither about perfection, nor is it about learning all of these at one time. Instead, it's about taking the time to also discover and experience use of these tools by reading books, watching films, or just talking to people. Effective communication involves not only frontally broadcasting a message, which also has its effects, but also triggering stimulus, eliciting genuine empathetic interest, and sometimes more meaningful spontaneous feedback. As we all say, it takes two to tango. What kind of response or feedback do you want? So then, there we have it. Those are examples of correlative conjunctions in use. The conjunctive adverb. Conjunctive adverbs or adverbial conjunctions are also called transitional devices. They're used to create complex relationships between ideas. A particularly interesting one and a personal favorite of mine is however, because it can help to illustrate 
or better yet, articulate tolerance for different perspectives, different worldviews, approaches, or even different versions of the truth. Conjunctive adverbs carry out the functions of addition, comparison, concession, contrast, emphasis, example or illustration, summary, and time sequence. Very important functions, I think. I would recommend being careful not to bomb your audience with too many of these simply because you can. Context will connect ideas anyway. We're aiming to use transitions and signaling gracefully while delivering presentations in English as a second language. And too many conjunctive adverbs could have the opposite effect. So now instead of handing you examples on a plate as I did before, I will now invite you to take the initiative to do some DIY English. So again, head over to trainingtree.de slash podcast for a comprehensive list of many more conjunctive adverbs. You'll also find links to all my other podcasts. Listen to this episode again if you like and read along while I speak. Simply check out the show notes for this episode. This could help you to develop your pronunciation. I want you to be active and take ownership of your own learning experience. I want you to like it if you like it and if you don't, lie to me. Just kidding. But feel free to share and compare. Check out other sources. If you like this format, just subscribe on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. As wondrous as the internet is, together with all its inherent democratization of the learning experience, you have to do something to make progress. Exercise your choice. You get to explore the options, see for yourself, and decide for yourself what works for you. At this point, I reflect on the content and invite you to do the same. Again, as I said in part one of the series, this is by no means a complete lesson in presentation skills. My expertise lie in the field of language, in this case, English for work. There will always be an element of repetition in language learning. It's all in the game. And this is where you get to enjoy as much repetition as you want outside of paid time. Reflection brings everything together. I ask myself the question, all in way of saying, what exactly? I attempt to summarize it all and break through the blah, so to speak. I review what we've learned, clarify purpose and context, and even, perhaps, give you another reason to listen again. In our next episode 6, The Lived Experience, we get even less abstract. I get to converse with a dear friend of mine, accomplished professional in his field, fluent and proficient user of English as a second language. We talk about values and attitudes related to the adult learning experience, tools and tips that could be helpful to you. In short, we talk about the things that work, so be sure to check it out. Okay then, as we reflect a little further, Today, we looked at conjunctions for fluency. We spoke about many things. And again, I asked myself the question, all in way of saying, what exactly? Many conjunctions translate almost perfectly into German in both meaning and manner of use. When you find them, reflect on the meaning and possible uses in your everyday language. It makes good sense to start by learning only a few of them at a time. Give them time and space to emerge naturally into your active language vocabulary. I am saying that sometimes the packaging of a message is more important than the message itself, and that sometimes it's not about perfection, or even about what is said, but how it is said, and what kind of feedback the message inspires. I'm saying that I want my learners to get to the stage where they feel free to give themselves permission to dance with the language. 
And I much rather have a learner who speaks and tries and questions rather than one who never speaks and spends all their time doing abstract grammar puzzles. I'm also saying that it makes good sense to take the time to learn them and fluent delivery of your presentation content can imply fluency and competence with your topic. I'm saying sometimes appearing to be authentic in your attempt or effort to connect on a more human level might elicit a more authentic response from your audience. Forced notions of perfection might not help you as much as giving yourself time and space to learn these things would. I'm also saying that sometimes the softer approach is uncalled for, depending on the purpose of your delivery and whether your audience is already externally motivated to listen, in which case simply reading, for instance, would also work. With a small win is always a good way to begin. Okay then, we've come to the end of this episode 5 of the English Coach Podcast. Feel free to check out the show notes for this episode at trainingtree.de slash podcast. Like it if you like it, and if you don't, lie to me. But still, feel free to share it with a friend, post a rating, or better yet, write a comment. This will help it to help you as it is intended to do. Subscribe only if you feel like, so you know when there's a new episode available. Thanks for listening. Looking forward to hearing from you and bye for now.